Good morning, everybody. My name is Laurent Mosé. I'm a French archaeologist, so uh, excuse my English from the very start, but I'm the manager of the uh, prehistoric uh, areas in uh, Sangren and Lyra. And uh, I wanted to uh, sum up the development of our so-called past family concept the last 50 years. Out of channel life from the past into the present. Uh, we have family-like groups living in the past, and it's actually our oldest attraction. It has been a long quest in between research, mediation, and attraction. And it will be my first part uh, regarding the rise and this quest, uh, this long history developing the concept in uh, Sangland. How past families uh, fit in the concept of uh, Sangland uh, as one-man visions? Actually, the, uh, the young ethnologist at the very start, uh, Hans Ole Hansen. Um, the selection and the guidance of our past families are a very dynamic <coughs> concept, but quite time and labor consuming. So I will uh, get back on this topic. More than communication, uh, it's actually a mediation in between some different spheres of interest. Uh, the research part, uh, our own, uh, the museums, and of course the individuals that are uh, involved in the, in the concept. So I will take a look on this story of motivation. Then I will give some uh, different examples of mediation forms and I will look at, uh, well, this debate uh, combining living history uh, and research. Is it compromising? Then I will conclude all our forces and challenges. The prehistory of Saunland. Uh, first, the mission and the location. Uh, all the project actually started in the Lyra region where uh, Hans Ole Hansen uh, started to uh, build some mud and wood reconstructions uh, in the wake of the new archaeology uh, in the, at the end of the 50s. Then in 1964, uh, he founded with a couple of uh, academics uh, the British Centre as the Historical Archaeological Experimental Centre at Lyra. And the object close of our uh, institution is uh, following. The center's aim is to operate a research center for conducting ethnographic, historical, and archaeological experiments. And this includes implementation of research projects, dissemination, other results through scientific channel, active communication, and teaching to citizens. We got a progressionary grant to start the project from the Carlsberg Foundation. It's always good to have some extra beers for working. Uh, we got leased a vast moraine uh, ground, about 40 hectares, uh, by the uh, near uh, uh, laying Lederborg Castle for 99 years. So we have uh, 49 years uh, left to uh, develop the place. And the very first actors of the project was actually uh, Professor Axel Stensberg students and uh, about 90 international volunteers, headed by Hans Ole Hansen. I hope we got our full uh, they are on the way, but uh, today uh, our reconstructed areas, uh, lay, as such, uh, we have plenty of space in between uh, an early Stone Age area from uh, 12,000 to 4,000 BC, area Aryan Age area uh, covering 500 BC to 200 AD, the Viking Age, uh, and the modern farms through the 18th and 19th century. And we have uh, uh, developed the uh, the last decades a lot of time neutral activity uh, and workshops. Action. Yes, in '65 uh, the place uh, was opened to the public during the construction of the uh, Iron Age village. And the evidence is actually uh, the, the former excavations from uh, Jutland covering the period 500 BC 280. Then a uh, pottery and weaving workshop uh, were created to provide the clothing and the utensils for the reconstructed uh, area. Uh, we had at the same time some agricultural experiments and uh, some living uh, historical activities like horse riding uh, with reenactors from Iron Age, actually uh, one of the oldest uh, reenactment uh, groups in, uh, in Denmark. And it attracted a lot of people at that time. So, the past family idea was launched to experience the use and behavior of the uh, reconstructed houses and uh, bring to life to the place. Actually, the ambition was to uh, live there during a whole year stay in complete autonomy. And actually, it didn't work that much. For three months, uh, there was a lack of, of, of economy regarding uh, the providing of, uh, of food and especially the material because they only had some basic, well, not enough basic uh, tools to actually start 
the living in the past, uh, especially regarding uh, agricultural activities and and, uh, and products from from these uh, from these uh, these crops. So the first 20 years, uh, the past family concept went from uh, being the main attraction uh, to a competing attraction. In the 70s, we had a falling interest uh, for the, the center because uh, there were almost research and experiments alone. So uh, we developed uh, the center with an educational uh, department, inspiring us uh, for mediatizing and, and uh, pedagogy uh, to pupils, and maybe to other uh, kind of uh, uh, audience. We actually create uh, an African village to bring the ethnographic uh, aspects in and the 19th century farms as well. In 1974, we actually opened the concept for external applicants because before that we had only volunteers from the very first pioneer generation, but then the very uh, concept uh, took uh, form. The number of visitors increased a little bit at the end of the 70s, and then we create a research grant uh, that was that was actually, uh, uh, which was actually f financed by the entrance tickets. Uh, and uh, at that time, the past families you know, got competition from other areas, like a time neutral uh, family activity area, so-called Fire Valley. And we had some uh, European archaeologists uh, presented their experimental projects uh, on site. You can recognize that Boo Messon, it was the former director, and uh, Jacques Pellegrin from uh, France. There's a different in shape. <laughs> well, the visitors' entries topped in 1989. Then we had the generation of search for authenticity through old times. So we had still various uh, controlled experiments in prison time uh, about many subjects, raw materials, uh, building processes. Uh, then the Viking settlement and the Stone Age site were uh, established. And we have teaching sessions uh, developed with costumes and drama. And I will come back on this topic later. The past family concept gains more expertise at that point, at that point and uh, regarding close, good and silent guidance. So I will refer to uh, Ida Demont uh, later on to talk about our clothing. Then in the 2000s, we became uh, an educational center and a tourist attraction under the protection of the Queen. It's always good. And uh, we had, uh, well, professionalism in all levels. Uh, then we introduced the past families in both uh, Stone Age and modern times. We had also some field uh, archaeological uh, investigations of the footsteps of the uh, past families at that time. Since uh, 2010, we opened the, uh, the concept to uh, applicants from abroad, and we have experienced an increase in international scientific and individual interest for the concepts. So actually, since the end of the 90s, with the internet, uh, and all the news, all the net, uh, we got, uh, well, uh, uh, very, very, very many applicants for this, uh, uh, this concept. The past family concept within uh, sound learners. It's actually hiding in our uh, earlier logo. It's uh, the symbol from the, for the, the, the world ash, in the Nordic uh, mythology. We have three missions. Principally, archaeological research and experimentation, mediation and living history, and education and hands-on archaeology. We take uh, the original artifacts and structures and context as a start for our reconstruction. And of course, we can question them uh, and their interpretation. It can be existing evidence or brand new evidence in order to get some information about the typology and chronology about the geography, the uh, natural resources, and the economy at that time, on that place, the function and the technology, and some anthropological and uh, societal uh, aspects. Then we reconstruct the uh, different items uh, and contexts. We record the empirical data and experience of these reconstructions from the very start, and of course, as we uh, act in the landscape, we form at the same time an authentic cultural context. We are recording the use of these tools and buildings and also their taphonomy, how they actually decay and disappear afterwards. Uh, we try to uh, uh, get some inspiration from the ethnographic material. 
Then we compare these reconstructions to the genuine artifacts and context. And if they have some common aspects, we can actually put our stories on these uh, genuine artifacts uh, that we uh, otherwise uh, do not know that much from written evidence per definition uh, from, from that time. Is there matches or not? But here stops the research part of that. Then we try to communicate and actually converting these facts and results into human experiences. So we try to recreate some prehistorical witnesses uh, that actually can uh, talk about one object, one context, one story, a local story, maybe uh, bring some information and data from abroad and other, uh, other, other horizons. Then we can tell about tradition and disruption, beliefs and representation. And uh, these uh, actors, past families, otherwise teachers, instructors, presenters, they try to connect these reconstructions to the visitors. We are on dialogue for that, and we try to engage people uh, with uh, hands-on. So we got, as instructor, presenter, uh, many know-how and thoughts and feelings, but it's the meaning to uh, provoke some, uh, some thoughts and feelings as well uh, uh, for our visitors. If we achieve that, we have a nice time travel. But, do past families live up to the concept? And how can we ensure the visibility of this so much part of this uh, concept? We try first to select our uh, family-like group uh, with different genders and generations. They have, of course, personal and familial motivation for active holidays, and we uh, enhance the term active. <laughs> Uh, we try to spot some general open and service-mindedness and curiosity because the most difficult part of the concept is actually to be in contact, permanent relation to the public in your uh, everyday life. Uh, we can, uh, of course, select some of uh, uh, earlier past families, but it's not necessarily an advantage. Uh, well, we try to check the expectation uh, of the families fitting the concept. We have, of course, some extra placement constraints uh, as uh, fitting the kids' age, because kids having fun make parents happy, so it could be a puzzle to uh, place these uh, families during the, the summer holidays. We mix experienced families and new ones, but uh, actually uh, we have had better experiences with the only new uh, past family groups. Um, and, of course, we try to uh, evaluate the family chemistry in between these families, if it works good, if they can collaborate quite uh, uh, good, and uh, if they can be allowed to come back. We have a qualitative support uh, for this, uh, this concept. Before the stay, uh, we have uh, actually a manual, uh, these books over here, uh, with many information about uh, the, uh, uh, the concept, uh, the different practical aspects, the, uh, the story behind every constructions and buildings and, and context. And they have some homework uh, when they, as soon as they are selected, uh, first March, they had to make their own shoes and their own underwear uh, regarding uh, Stone Age. They got an invitation to an introduction day, where, well, only for the Danish citizens. Uh, and it went actually quite good for the people from abroad, just started, starting from the scratch, uh, coming during the summer holidays. But there they have a presentation with the staff, the houses, basics, closings, and recipes. And they can network with their neighbors. And uh, they can work in the fields and on common tasks. During this day, they uh, get a trollman, a wise follower, that actually guides the uh, whole state. We take some daily briefings about tasks, the announced activities for the public, uh, different projects, and spontaneous events, if they would like to sacrifice something or someone <laughs> in the uh, sacrificial pot. Uh, so it's, uh, we learn them some different crafts and uh, eventually some presentation techniques. And actually after these six days, uh, well, we pass from uh, having kids uh, in our uh, Iron Age village to having colleagues because we can, they, they, they learn very quickly to uh, manage the contact with the public. And after this day, we evaluate, uh, both parties evaluate the uh, uh, the, the state. So the past family get a scheme to fill up about their the accumulation, the contact with the public, some different activities, if they have remarks and other 
good ideas. There have been many changing interests in the concept and forming the concept. Uh, actually, from the side of experimental research and, and documentation, we went from recordings on diaries, and we have plenty of them, like paper versions, um, uh, to uh, some reconstruction schemes in order to uh, actually uh, record reconstructions, reparations, uh, and other installations very quickly on just one, uh, uh, one uh, sheet of paper uh, regarding uh, respectively uh, objects, uh, installations, and process. So we can take the, uh, the recipes as well. And we have, of course, many uh, archived uh, experiments uh, and targeted projects in the whole uh, landscape. So you can see uh, the, uh, the black dots are the disappeared uh, uh, installations and all the white ones, the existing ones. Uh, and of course, we have long uh, studies in the, those uh, areas. Here we have the Stone Age uh, area, and there we have the uh, Iron Age village. Regarding museum communication and activity program, uh, well, we had uh, kind of guinea pigs in the 60s, uh, but we would like to, well, uh, form and, and learn our past families to be uh, prehistoric eyewitnesses. And it can take time uh, to engage them in uh, working in roles uh, and, and, and focusing on, on the historical archaeological data. Uh, we will try to transform uh, the spectators of our past families into tra time traveling partakers. And there I refer to my colleagues uh, later, uh, Paper, uh, Annie Ibsen. Um, do the uh, family motivation reflect the visitor's interests? Uh, probably. Well, we had in the 60s some community uh, involving students, scientists, um, and alternative volunteers, so called hippies, in the 70s. But uh, through the 80s and 90s, we got many pioneers of authenticity. It was the, the, the most important experience of being in, in, in the past and understanding that. Uh, so we had many uh, pedagogues and, and teachers actually coming there with their uh, children. And now since uh, 2000, we have some, well, I have a problem to translate this, we have the Selvin Dutch and family experiences, uh, many of these recomposed families coming with their many uh, children from different wives and uh, trying to be offline all the, uh, the stay, uh, just to forget the, the modern life in uh, our century. We have had some various presentation exper experiences, uh, but food testing is actually the, uh, the most successful. And we try to link uh, food recipes to landscape resources. Uh, we have some uh, reconstructed uh, stomach content, uh, our so-called Aurop Haggis uh, there in Stone Age. Uh, we try to involve the uh, past families in hunting, fishing, warrior training activities, uh, rituals like uh, uh, burial uh, processions uh, and uh, events. Uh, yes, and here we see uh, some uh, uh, some uh, Romans making a razzia in the, the Iron Age village. Uh, on storytelling, yes, we try to learn people to improvise and, and to be in dialogue with the visitors. Uh, in order to, to tell about the immaterial aspects. We have had some diachronic presentation across times and space, uh, so people could be uh, able to compare the different houses uh, through uh, times. And as well, we uh, uh, created the hunter-gatherer culture festival uh, in the Stone Age area, having Stone Age families living one place and other uh, hunter-gatherer or Stone Age culture people from uh, modern time being there. So we had Bushman in 2010 and Inuits in 2012. For which scientific gain of past families there? We have had uh, many kind of experiments, but the uh, oldest and the very first was actually to fire up in a uh, fire in a whole house, uh, house number one, and excavate the, uh, the place 25 years later. Do like actually a controlled experiment? And uh, we had some several ones later on about the climate inside, uh, within the Iron Age uh, houses. But are past families actually necessary to control the experiments as such? Recording, <coughs> we have recording uh, past families experiencing the building of burial mounds uh, on the place. So they have to uh, bury the smith every uh, week and uh, cut some turfs and, and build uh, uh, a mound. 
uh, and we expect to cut these eight different mounts, maybe in a couple of years or ten years, and to compare them with some uh, original ones. Well, candid past families can enlighten process and actually form comparative stratigraphic contexts. We have had some soil sampling uh, within the houses in order to uh, spot the long-term impact of the, uh, the past families' uh, uh, stays during the last years. And at last, we had some excavations uh, on entrance uh, rooms in, uh, in the house, uh, but it actually pointed out the lack of recordings uh, during these, uh, these years. They found some spikes that actually was the meaning to replace the beams of the houses after they collapsed. Uh, on a plane, but the, uh, the students didn't know that. We found also many uh, beer capsules on the place, uh, and there was no telling about that uh, one either. Well, to conclude on 50 years past family business, um, this concept has uh, achieved some goals. It gave a basis for an interactive dialogue linking archaeological data and the public questioning from facts and interpretations. They enlightened the uh, ancient processes and our experience of them, and it can lead to uh, new scientific issues. Then uh, they actually respond to uh, public interest and societal fo focuses uh, about uh, reinterpreted or new archaeological uh, evidence. But many challenges remain. Uh, following, up, following up the recording of the past family's long-term impact on the formation of the comparative context, and it has not been uh, systematic uh, uh, in, during the very first decades of the center. We have to digest the enormous amount of ethnographical evidence uh, gathered on these diaries during 40 years. So if there's any PhD project about past families there, you're welcome. Uh, and then we need to upgrade continuously presentation techniques for the past family and maybe integrate some new uh, evidence, uh, especially from the fast-running archaeology. Gen genetics uh, investigation. 